Everybody, I'm going to read some books about some animals, and this book is called On Noah's Ark. Wouldn't it have been fun to go on Noah's Ark and get to take care of the animals and just see how many animals that came on board that big old ark? So this is a story by Jan Brett. She writes such wonderful books with such beautiful drawings, and this is called On Noah's Ark. Grandpa Noah says that the rains are coming. Soon the land will be covered with water. Now just look at that beautiful painting. It's incredible. Grandpa Noah is building an ark for our family and the animals to live on until it stops raining. The ark is ready. Look at those beautiful picture of all the animals and there's the ark. Oh, Grandpa, his Grandpa Noah built it. The animals go in two by two. Big animals go thump and bump onto the ark. Wow. Wouldn't that have been fun to watch all those animals coming? Middle-sized animals clip clop by. And small animals, why, they just squeezed in. Oh, that's incredible. Flying creatures perch on beams above. Swimming animals splish splash below. Look at all those flying creatures. They're just perched up on wooden beams. It rains and it rains and only the tops of mountains poke up above the water. Oh my goodness, that was a big rainstorm, wasn't it? <clears throat> it is crowded inside the ark. The animals push and they shove each other. That's a lot of animals. I just love these drawings. The ark rocks back and forth like a giant cradle. The animals fall asleep all jumbled in together. Look at that. They're sleeping. <clears throat> Everyone is asleep except for me. I tiptoe around and I untangle the animals. Wow, it would have been so cool to have your grandpa be Noah. It rains and it rains and it rains. You know how long it rains for? 40 days and 40 nights. That's a lot of rain. It looks like he fell asleep too. <clears throat> One morning I wake up. I don't hear the rain. I look out and the sun is shining. Oh, can you imagine after seeing rain for 40 days and then looking out the window and finally there's sunshine. I run and I wake up Grandpa Noah. He sends my dove off to look for land. She returns with a fresh green leaf from a new tree. Wow. Grandpa Noah steers the ark to land. The animals wake up and they look outside. I bet they were eager to go and just run and stretch. Two by two, the animals look for new homes. They go east and west and north and south, all different directions they go. Some of the animals stay with us. Grandpa plants a tiny seed. There's his Grandpa Noah planting the seed. Look at that. These pictures are so beautiful. Soon we will all be settled into this new place. And do you see that rainbow in the sky? That was a promise from God that he would never destroy the world again with a flood. You know, I wanna look at one thing. I wanna see, I think Jan Brett not only wrote this, but I also believe she's the illustrator and she drew all these wonderful pictures. Just to take time, if you have this book or you could get it from the library one day, just to look at the pictures is incredible. There's so much to see that we couldn't just see in this short time. Another book I wanna read is about bats. It's called Zipping, Zapping, Zooming Bats. Do you think there were bats on the ark? 
You think there were two of them perched way up high? There probably were. Zipping, zapping, zooming. Bats. A lot of people are afraid of bats. When the sun goes down, bats come out to hunt. You have to look quickly to see a bat before it's gone. Many bats hunt insects. They eat lots of insects. Each night a bat chomps half of its own weight in bugs. So if you weigh 60 pounds, that's like eating 125 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day. Don't be scared if a bat flies past your head. It won't get into your hair. It's probably catching a juicy mosquito. Look at that. So you don't have to be afraid of them. Bats are terrific hunters. A little brown bat can catch 150 mosquitoes in you know how many minutes? 15 minutes. The gray bat can gobble 3,000 insects in one night. Bracken Cave in Texas is home to 20 million Mexican free-tailed bats. Together, together, they munch 250 tons of insects every night. Bats help get rid of insects that bite people. Bats also zap moths and beetles and grasshoppers. These insects eat farmers' crops and the foods that you and I need. So there's the bats. Wow, that's a lot that they eat. Bats are good hunters because they have a special way of using sound. Bats make high beeping sounds. These sounds are too high pitched for our ears, but bats can hear things ours can't. The beeps go out from the bat in waves and the sound waves hit objects. When sound waves hit an object, they bounce back. The bounce sound waves come back to the bat as echoes and the bat can tell by the echoes what kind of insect is near and exactly where it is. Then the bat can catch it. We call this echolocation. That's incredible. The echoes that bounce off of a tree sound different from the echoes that bounce off a bug. Bats use echolocation to hear things that are in their way. They can zoom fast through dark forest and black cave tunnels. If a bat gets into your house, open a door or window. The bat will echolocate and hear the op and hear the opening it can use to fly out. Bats are good hunters because they are expert flyers. Their wings are different from bird wings. Bat wings have long arm bones with extra long finger bones. A thin skin called a me membrane stretches between the bones. The membrane connects the wing bones to the bat's legs and body. It may also join the tail to the leg. So here's the bat's body. Here's the wing membrane, the th little thumb there, a second finger, a third finger, a fourth finger, a fifth finger. There's its tail membrane and its tail. I'm going to show you that close up. Look at that. All the parts of his body. That's incredible. Wow. Bat wings are like webbed hands. A flying bat can move its wings much the way you can move your fingers. This means a bat can quickly change the shape of its wings. If a bug dodges away, the bat can zigzag fast and chase it. A bat can catch a flying insect in its wing, flip it on into its tail and membrane, and then scoop it into its mouth. Bats have hooked claws on their toes and thumbs, and when bats sleep or clean themselves, they hang upside down by their toe claws. They use their claws to move around on their roost, to comb their fur and to clean their ears. Bats keep themselves as clean as cats using both their tongues and claws. Can you see those bats? Look at that, hanging there upside down and cleaning themselves. Because bats fly at night, many people are scared of them. Sometimes people tell scary stories about vampires that can change into bats. Dracula and other vampires are not real. Bats fly at night because that's when they can find their favorite meals. Bats are really very gentle. In China, bats are considered good luck, and the Wufu sign has five bats drawn in a circle with their wingtips touching. Inside the circle is the tree of life, and the Wufu sign is like our four-leaf clover. It means long life, good luck, wealth, 
health and happiness. Emperors liked bat signs on their robes, thrones, and palaces. In winter, many bats hibernate. This means the bats sleep deeply. While bats are hibernating, their breathing slows down and their heart rate drops from 900 to 20 beats a minute. Hibernating bats need less energy to stay alive. Bats get ready for hibernation by stuffing themselves full of food, especially in the last weeks of warm weather. Their bodies store the extra food as fat. And this fat will be their food through the winter. Sometimes when people explore caves, they kill bats by accident. If you went into a cave where bats were hibernating, you would wake them up. Then they would fly to another part of the cave. Each time that happens, the bats use up about a month's supply of fat. If they use up too much stored food, they will starve before spring when they can hunt again. If you go into a cave in June or July, be sure to look for baby bats. If you see pups, never touch or bother them. Leave quickly and quietly. Bats are mammals. They are the only flying animals that nurse. This means the mother's bodies make milk to feed their babies. Bat pups hang together in large group called, groups called nurseries. Each mother returns to feed her pup at least twice a night. The pups need their mother's milk to survive. And if you disturb a nursery cave, the frightened mother's milk may leave and the pups will starve. Can you see all those little baby bats there, all those little pups? Oh. I got to go into a cave once and see bats, but I don't remember a lot about it. I would like to go again. Besides disturbing their caves, people harm bats by destroying their homes. People close off their attics and tear down old barns. They seal off empty mines and cut down forests where bats like to live. Several kinds of bats are now in danger of dying out. In some places, there aren't enough bats left to keep down the number of insect pests. Farmers lose crops and mosquitoes feast on us. People could use poisons to kill bugs, but poisons can be dangerous to humans, other animals, and to plants. There are many p ways people can help bats. Some people put bat houses in their yards. Public parks and nature centers may have houses for large groups of bats. There's a plan in here for making your own bat house. Groups who care about wild animals are putting gates on cave entrances. Bats can zip easily through the gates, but people can't. In Midfield, Alabama, elementary school children can join the Bat Club. That means bats are terrific. Members help spread the word that bats are not scary. If a bat flies past you in the dark, listen closely. Maybe you can hear the soft, fast flutter of its wings before it's gone. Even if you can't, you can be sure that the bat heard you. Look at, they're listening for a bat. That's wonderful to know all these facts about them. And these are just some different. This is a California leaf-nosed bat. This is a hog-nosed bat, a Mexican free-tailed bat, a gray bat, a vampire bat, and flying foxes. They're giants in the bat world. Let me show you those a little closer. Kind of interesting. Look at those. They do look a little scary, but we don't really have to be afraid of them. Zipping, zapping, zooming bats. So good night, everyone. Um, I love you, and I hope that you'll have a good night's sleep with good dreams. And remember, if you're ever out in the dark and you see a bat, don't be afraid of it. Okay, you learned a lot of new facts about them today. So good night, everyone. I love you so much. Good night. I love you. You're so special. Good night. Amen.